Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. My name is Gail Snyder. I'm the Executive Director for Dementia Friendly Fort Worth. We are proud to offer this program with funding from the Area Agency on Aging. These programs are recorded and are made available for future use through a YouTube channel. And today we have the great pleasure of introducing one of our own, Steve, for a lesson in leatherworking. So Steve, I'm gonna hand the baton off to you and let you show us what you have prepared for today. And we are so excited to see. All right, well, first of all, I wanted to, I'm gonna move my computer a little bit so you can see it. People asked last week, how do I drill through the pieces of wood, you know, to make pens? And uh, so I set up a piece in my lathe chuck so you can see hopefully you can see it very easily basically i've got a chuck uh, let me get, the, get down there yeah, come on come on come on man. there you go okay That's i have it. a chuck here that holds the piece of wood and then on the other side i have a drill chuck and the piece of wood turns the drill bit is a stationary and it just move we just move it back and forth and so it drills a center hole. Uh, since the chuck is designed basically to hold it, I did it is. completely in the center. So it's easier to work with. I don't have to, um, sometimes in a drill press, you can get it off center and things like that, uh, which makes, uses a lot more wood uh, by the time you're done. But anyway, that's how I do it. Okay. Um, I usually set them up probably about four or five pins, cut the pieces of wood, and then drill them and glue tubes. <coughs> anyway, the hey, leather work. Um, hey, Gail. Okay, Steve. Uh, yeah. Gail, is there a way to make uh, Steve the, 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 the main view? If, if you change from gallery view to uh, speaker view, it should be up in your right-hand corner. Okay, thank you. Then he'll thank you. take a picture. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so now I'm big, huh? Now, now, oh. you're, now you're big, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. le leather working is probably one of the oldest trades in the world. Uh, it's mentioned in the Bible, in fact, in Genesis 3.21. It says, after Adam and Eve sinned, God <laughs> created clothes for them out of animal skins. That's all leather is, is animal skins. And so uh, that has gone through for years and years and years and, you know, all different forms and variations. Uh, it wasn't up until the 20th century we came into the more of the uh, manufacturing of different leather type of projects as far as for synthetics and things like that. But uh, everything I do is with natural, and I'll see if I can get it to where you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna show you some grades of leather. Well, first of all, I buy my leather. I'm gonna move my, move my, a little bit farther the west. Rolls, uh, this is a, just a piece I cut off. A big, big rolls, probably about uh, uh, eight feet long, okay? Four feet wide, roughly. And uh, then I just have a big board I put out in the shop and outside, and I cut them off of that, okay? I can have manageable pieces I don't have to work with. Um, I have taken some, like when I did my Santa belt, I basically cut the whole length of it to get the right length for the Santa belt in there. Um, but leather has a lot of different things. It's a very interesting, it's a very fun because it's not real difficult to work with. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a relaxing in the sense that to me, it's, it's easier because it's safer. Uh, the only knife time you use a knife is when you're cutting your main piece, okay? And the other chance you could get is if you don't pay attention and you slip off one of the little punches I'm gonna show you here with the hammer, okay? So you can nip your finger a little bit, you know, just like anything in a carpentry, you know, type of thing. You just gotta pay attention a little bit. Do you keep, so keep band-aids around? I do. I've got a whole fact. I've got a whole stack of band-aids here to use because of the woodworking too. Um, anyway, it's not too bad, you know, but it's easy to work with. 
Uh, leather is a very pliable, as you can tell. Um, it comes in a lot of different styles. Some of them, there's two different main types. One is called chromium, and that's the way it's tanned. Uh, it's a used chromium uh, salts and materials, and it's very thin and flexible. It's used mostly for, for um, furniture and, and garments and things like that. It, you can't use it to do the stamping, like putting a design on it, okay? Uh, but you can get all sorts of colors, so they'll dye it all over colors. Uh, this one's purple, here's a blue one, okay? This one's black, you know? Um, it's cheaper than what we call veggie tan, which is what we use to stamp with because it's a faster process. Uh, veggie tan, which is what you normally consider a, a of uh, coloring of leather and things like that is, is a vegetable tan. And it mm -hmm. takes three times as long to tan this as it does for a chromium. So it's more expensive to buy this, but you can do a lot more with it. Uh, particularly because it's hard to sew, unless you have a sewing machine, it's hard to sew this. So floppy, okay. Um, so things like that. Um, and basically, uh, leather is, is determined by weight, okay? Um, now, if you're overseas, they'll use it with millimeters and things like that. In the States, they use weight, and weight determines the thickness of it. Uh, this is a two to three ounce, but basically it's very, very thin. It's almost paper thin and sometimes with the two ounce, three ounce, a little bit more. Um, the reason they do a two to three or uh, three to two to three, three to four, four to five, is because it's a natural product. And even though if you kind of split it out the same, it's going to have a different weight in it because of the consistency, the density of the leather. Okay, so that's why they have different weights in it. Um, a little bit different. This is a three to four. You can see it's a little bit different. Yeah, get there. Okay. Yeah. And then you got a four to five, which is even more. And then you got some others that are really pretty, pretty thick in there. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they'll go up to about even um, 16. Wow. Uh, okay. And that's pretty thick. There's a lot of saddle leather, things like that. Very thick because they take a lot of wear in there. But I don't do anything. Usually I use about... Uh, Four to five is the maximum I use for most of my stuff. Um, I just don't know and don't need much for anything else because I don't, I don't do saddles. I don't do things like that. So um, I don't even do nice sheaves. I just do other things. Some of the things I've done, uh, and I'll show you how to get through. I've done some coasters in this one, designed it for my wife. And I, you know, I'm sorry, it's a little hazy in here. This is the lighting. But uh, Got an elephant in it. She loves elephants, so I, I see that. engraved an elephant and then painted it. Uh, I did some card wallets or credit mm. cards. Oh, uh, nice. Engraved. This is one of my nephews. He likes to hunt, so I put a hunter in there. And then for the initial, some uh, the things for the old engineers, right? Yeah. Pocket protectors. I, 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 I never had a leather one, but I use those all the time. Yeah. Uh, some pin sleeves, those are the pins I make, you See, just slip them in there. Yeah. If you hold it over to where, to where that light is, on the, on your left. Okay, I'm getting there. Better in that area. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, sorry. I'm still getting used to this part. Usually I'm not, <laughs> I need, if I sit down better, it's going to be better. Okay. okay. This part. It's gonna be a little bit better because you'll be able to see it better. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah these pin sleeves. What um, weight are those, Steve? How much? What weight are the? Is that these are, these are two to these are two to threes. Okay, so they're very thick, flexible, very thin. Um, these are three to fours. Um, this is probably about a six. Oh, okay. You know, okay, with a cork back. Yeah, since they're coasters, mm -hmm. I put a cork back on them. Mm -hmm. What's the there. design around the elephant? Okay, we've got a big elephant. 
And then I've got a little elephant stamped around it. Okay. Oh, oh I see you now. See with grass with each of the elephants. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then this is what Gail, I was working on this when you were here. Uh, I finally fi finished my bobble cover. Oh, that's great. Right. I had my, uh, this is my ordination Bible. So it was 1980 when I got it. So that's how many years? 40 years? Yeah. Something like that. Been right. around the world probably three or four times. Uh, the leather was getting pretty much chewed up, you know, by this time. So I just made a cover for it and made it so I could still keep in using it. This I made out of two or three also, so I could continue to have it so it'll flop open. Okay. Some so people use a little bit heavier leather, but it doesn't open up quite as nice to correct. me. Yeah. So I did, did this way. So the Maybe front and back. What was that? The front and back of the, of the Bible slip into the. Yeah, it's, it's got, a little, the, you got a little sleeve inside okay. here. Okay. So that's right into it. Uh, you can use this for, uh, my wife wants one for paperback. She, she wants one, I'm gonna make her for paperback. A little bit differently, um, the spine protector, I made this of leather you know, for mm -hmm. here, kind of hard. Uh, I'm gonna do hers with cloth, so it won't be quite as, it'll, it'll fold a lot easier. With the paperback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is one I did. In fact, I just, this is one of her Christmas presents, but I gave it to her early. This is a Ooh, portfolio nice. for her yeah. to carry papers in. And uh, it's a, uh, oh, what, about 12 and a half by 10 size. It's got a little pocket in it for her pencils and pens. And she just, then I've got a uh, um, rings on there in case she wants a strap. You know, I can, oh. I've designed mm -hmm. it so I can make a strap for her. Smart husband. Hmm? Smart can husband. Yeah. Can I ask a question and, uh, you don't have to answer? Yes, go ahead. How much, how much does something like that cost to make? Like oh, you this? don't have to answer if you don't want to. So oh, no, that's all right. Uh, the most expensive of this, besides the leather, is the time. Well, okay. yeah. But just um, the one. <laughs> yeah, because there's... Everything's hand sewn. I don't use a machine for anything. Ooh, I don't have cool. a sewing machine. Oh, yeah. It's hand sewn on this. Uh, everything I do is hand sewn. And so, um, probably the leather probably cost about dollars by the time I was done, you know, with the leather itself. How much did you say? Uh, what's that? How much did you say? About six or seven dollars for the leather oh. itself. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, now the time consuming because you have to cut the pieces, uh, you have to punch them. I had to figure, I actually designed my own handles here. These got little, it's got a little uh, tubes in it, plastic tubes in it to give it a little cushion in there. Um, and then she didn't want any design on it, but the only design is I put my kind of signature logo on the back and that's an acorn. Ah, there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, so anyway, that's that's what this one. Some projects like the bobble cover, actually, from start to finish, I probably did in three days. Oh. Okay. Oh, and part of the long, part of the oh. longest is. Oh God, I'm sorry, Don. Go ahead. How long did it take you to make the purse? Um, this. That was probably about three weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Start to finish. Okay. Um, just because you can't, the dyeing process takes a while. You know, it takes a while to do it. Yeah. You can't do it all at one time. Uh, and then you got to, I got to stamp, so I stamp out the holes to do the sewing in. And I had to sew the, the handles, okay, separately, mm -hmm. then sew it onto the strip pad here for support. And then sew the strip pad onto the side, okay. Of each each side, I'm a sorry. A lot of steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. must be and then difficult. I had to sew for that both sides onto the end. You know, the I said right. front and the back mm -hmm. onto the side piece. So there's so, a lot of so, sewing. I actually used almost a, a a spool of thread. Oh wow. For this. Okay. Do you uh, use so, twill thread? No, I use what's called uh, tiger resin thread. It's it's a oh. it's from Germany. And it's a woven thread. It's not a 
twisted thread. Okay. Um, and the reason you can use a twisted thread, and there are some brands that are very good. Uh, I use Tiger Thread because it's a very, um, it doesn't fray when you cut the ends of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't fray as you're sewing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it doesn't tangle up when you're sewing. Mm. Or some of the others, you know, because you're, you're not always pulling it straight through and things, you're moving around. Some of the others will bunch up and you've got to keep continually keep moving around mm -hmm. with it. Tiger thread, you don't do that. It's just very easy, mm -hmm. nice to work with. It um, sounds like so it's pre-waxed. It is pre-waxed, all pre-waxed, okay. yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other threads, but it's worth it as far well as for time it. consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can get all different weights, uh, you know, in it. Uh, I have a, this is about, I think, a 0.8 size type of thing. And the needles you buy are basically determined on the size of thread you're using for the mm -hmm. eye. And, mm -hmm. and I've got some different, I, I kind of went on a recommendation. And of course, the more, there are better brands of needles than others for leather work. Sure. And most leather needles don't have a sharp point. Mm-hmm. Uh, saddle stitch, they don't have a sharp point because you don't need it, okay, because you've already punched the holes in it. So it's kind of like a dull uh, one point. It'll still hurt, pick, prick you if you get it, you know, <laughs> yeah. your but it's not going to go into your skin type of thing. Um, and it will. Is it, a, um, uh, is it a curved needle? No, they're straight. Uh, everything I do is called a saddle stitch, which means you're using two needles. Okay, you got the whole string of needle on each end, and you're basically going through each hole twice. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong. Oh. Um, the stitch used like in a sewing machine where it just goes in and kind of twists, comes in, you know, that. it's kind of like a weave stitch. Mm -hmm. um, if one of those threads somewhere along the way breaks, you basically the whole seam opens up. Okay, saddle stitch, one of them can break, and it's not going to open up. Mm. Various, that's why I use saddles. They use it for a lot of the leather work because it's very strong. Um, and I just got used to it. I just, it, it's very, not hard, it's fast, comparatively, you know. Um, how, how much bigger is the hole compared to the thread since you have to put the thread and needle through two times? Not, not much because it, the, the leather will expand. Ah. Okay. It'll be a little bit more, I've got, sometimes, uh, when it's two to three ounce, I just have to punch with my punches one time. That hole's big enough, okay? Sometimes if it's a little bit thickier leather, I have an awl that I'll put through just to expand it just a little bit to get them through. Mm -hmm. But it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not that much. Okay. okay. Um, I think I did one. I think these were the hardest I did. It was a little bit thicker. I should use a little bit thinner on this, but I didn't have it. Uh, because you basically have four layers of leather you're sewing to. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, man. And so this one took a little bit more, uh, but, you know, it worked. You know, it worked. That's all, all you said. Steve, um, do you use a thimble? No. Ooh. What I use... Wow. <laughs> yes, that's what I would say, Martha. <laughs> I use his gloves. Oh, oh yeah. gloves. Yes. Um, Okay. I've done it without gloves, okay. but I got these gloves, and these are like I got them free from Northern Tool, something like that type of thing. They're just um, kind of neoprene, so they grab the needles well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just use those rather than a thimble. I've tried a thimble, and it just doesn't work as well to me. You either love them or hate them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You basically put both the needles through. You don't pull one through and then the other through put them both through because you put one through and then the other th all the way through you'll puncture the thread and then you cover form a knot in there mm -hmm. you put part of the needle through the other part of the needle through and you pull it through and so they don't 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 um the thread doesn't go through the needle doesn't go through the thread of the thread right uh, so it's a lot easier to work with this it's it's once you get it and, and a lot of that i learned from youtube <laughs> okay, there's a ton of YouTubes out there. Some really good uh, videos from different places, how to sew leather, uh, tips and tricks, you know, type of thing. Yeah. For some of them are masters and they do it so fast, you know, in the video, it's unbelievable. But anyway, 
they have some very good videos out there. And that's how I learned a lot of my sewing and actually what to buy, you know, as far as it. Uh, initially, I got a little sewing kit, a cheap set for my, my grandkids gave me proficiency from just regular, um, you know, it's like $10, you buy a whole sewing kit with needles and thread and all sorts of things like that. And, it, and that thread is just so, you know. Yeah. Throw it away. I, I've still got it and, and I've used it. Uh, I also have a sewing awl, which is basically an awl, you, which is one needle you put through it. And it's kind of more like a sewing machine, but a hand sewing type of thing. You push it through, twist it, you know, kind of loop it around, pull it out, pull it out. And I did that with this one, um, but I don't like it because if you look on the back side, I don't know if they can see on the back side of this one, you can see the, I'll try and get it. Oh, oh, yeah. the little there loops. You, you see oh, the little yeah. loops of the thread. Okay? Yeah. Where if you do a saddle stitch, you don't see the little loops. Oh, you don't yeah. have that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a much nicer looking sewing when you're done with it. Plus, I figured out, even though I only paid, I don't know, paid less than $7, it was at Harbor Freight for it, so I've got tons of thread and I've got that. It was just as easy to do the saddle stitch as it was using my sewing. Um, then I did, I, I think I showed you there, this was my birthday card I made for my wife. Oh, yeah. And leather. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love and, it. Uh, I love it. And then I made a little envelope for her. Oh, another envelope to go in. So anyway, so those are some of the things I do. Um, have done. I've done a lot of other things. I made purses for my daughters and granddaughters, and um, just a lot of different things I try to do with it. Uh, with leather work, it's like art, any artwork. Okay, However creative you can be, that's how you do it. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some standards you look at, you know, it's like, I've done a couple things here, kind of make so the little stamp designs. Mm -hmm. These are more standard designs. You know, you can buy some different tools worth. Uh, you make different things with it. This is one I took one of those standard designs and did a little bit of dyeing on. Oh, okay. uh, this one I did, I didn't finish it because I the project I was doing it for, I didn't have to do it, it got canceled twice. Oh, it's a minute. It's a minute man. Down the wow. Right. And I basically took it off the internet and traced it on here and then carved it. And I'll show you how wow. I carve it here. Wow. Just a minute. And uh, I'm not finished. I think I will. Basically, now I'm going to take um, kind of paint in the different areas of the minute man. So it'll be a colored uh, leather part in there. What, what kind of paint do you use, uh, Steve? Well, you can do a lot of different. I use basically it's more of an acrylic base. Okay. Uh, though, like with my with the um, um, birthday card, I use sharpies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very, very, very fine point sharpies uh, to do the coloring. Um, so it all varies a lot. Uh, the poster I did was basically kind of an acrylic base. You put a, then you put a, a uh, can't remember what it's called. It's a, let me see if I can find it here quickly. It's a leather sheen on top of it. And so when you dye it, it doesn't cover up the, the coloring. Most of it, oh. um, like you just kind of do different things like that. So I've, I've kind of got a lot. Uh, lately I've done more with Sharpies, but you can buy acrylic paint pens. Um, you can buy them on Amazon or you can buy the refillable ones. Mm -hmm. You just fill in whatever colors you want. And it's just like working with a pen, but it's acrylic paint. Yeah. You can do a lot of different things with it. You know, uh, you don't have to buy specifically things that say leather paint. Okay. You, there's always that marketing out there, but you don't have to do that. Okay. And you just be creative. I, I think the, the bigger tubes of paint I got, I bought it Ikea. Ikea? Ikea. Really? <laughs> yeah. um, and it's just, you know, uh, it doesn't take a lot of paint because you don't need a lot, you know. Um, but you just kind of work with it that way. Um, so what I was going to show you, 
how I do things a lot. Uh, I've got a piece of leather here okay. and I'm going to do a little stamping and the reason I put the blue tape on it because if I don't put the blue tape on it, it's going to curl up like this. Okay. Oh. okay. Because once you put the water on it, because you, what do you do is you case it so you, you put water on it so you can stamp it. And if you don't put something on the back of it, it's going to, once it dries out, it's just going to curl. Okay. So that's why I have even even this. Where did I put it? Yeah, and that's on YouTube. Okay. Even this one, I've still got the, the tape on the back. Okay. It's curled a little bit because I was actually I was going to mount it into a frame. Okay. Uh, when I was done, so I wasn't worried about how much. But it, if I hadn't put the tape on it, it'd be curled up real, yeah, real much, quite a bit in there. Oh, I was also going to show you too a veggie tan. You can buy. Um, some dyed. Uh, this one is just dyed on the surface. But you can some, get some that is dyed all the way through. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they're still veggie tan, which means you can still stamp. Okay. Can, can, can I ask you a question about yeah. the, 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 the tanning? Yeah. Sometimes I see uh, uh, outfits with made look like they're made out of white leather. Uh -huh. is, that, is, that, is that a, a longer tanning process? Yes, it is. Uh, because it's a, uh, I say, it all varies sometimes, not only that, of the, but the leather quality too. Okay. Okay. Uh, a lot of the leather, of course, we use a lot here in the States. Some of it comes from South America. Some of it comes from Europe. Um, a big sheet that I talked about, like, would, like the two to three ounce cost about $110. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. And sometimes, unfortunately, the, the, the thinner they sell in the larger sheets, the thicker they'll, they'll cut them and, you know, cut them so they have a smaller sheet you can buy. Um, so it's not the cheapest. Okay? No. That's probably the most expensive of everything is the leather. Uh, but there's a good outlet in Fort Worth. There's a couple in Fort Worth. One is Tandy, which is on yep. A20. Uh, the other one is Frog Jelly, which is on 287 in Arlington. And uh, they actually, the fellow that owns that used to work for Tandy. So, um, he set it up, probably some of the best prices, and actually one of the, one of the top saddle makers in Texas buys his leather from them. And so uh, he's got a little video, and he talks about the different quality and things like that. And they're very good. That's where I buy my leather, because it's very good. You can just go in. It's a big warehouse type of thing. And, uh, you don't have to take the first bite off of the stack. I'll take as many hot hides off the stack till they find out what you want. Okay. Oh, great. So then you buy it, you know, type of thing. Uh, they're very good. Um, I was there uh, last week. In fact, Gail, we're, I've been doing that project for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And actually, I sourced my leather from them. Okay. Ah. So they did these for me uh, rather than setting off, getting them offline. Uh, some of the things I do, I buy off of Amazon, uh, and some of my source locally. And uh, as I go through this, at the end, I'll kind of uh, offer a little bit of thing here. There's tools we use for this, okay? Before I do the stamping part, um, major tools. These are called stamps. Basically, they're just little designs on, each, on the end of each one of these, okay? And you just take a hammer and you just down on top of them. Uh, there's a swivel knife. It's got a knife blade on it, and it's used to basically to cut around curves and things like that. And I'll use this in one of the things I'm going to show you. And then there's just a few other things too, okay, with it. You don't need a lot of the tools to do it. Uh, I've got some friends that do this professionally that probably about four to five hundred stamps. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I've got probably 25 because it's creativity. Yeah. You, you figure out, you could do is take basic stamps and do a lot of different things with it. Okay. Uh, because you just decide. Part of leather working is the beginning is just getting the um, scrap pieces of leather and the stamps and you stamp them and you see what you can do, what you can figure out with each one. Okay. Okay. The combinations and the 
things like that. And uh, that's not, you know, that's kind of the fun part because it's all creativity. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I got this piece of leather. I'm going to take and case it. And what casing is basically is you're wetting it down. Uh, there's two ways most people do. Some people use a, a um, um, spray bottle. I like to do a sponge because the sponge is a little bit more consistent as far as for, it doesn't take quite as long. Um, let's see if I'm going to get it down so you can see a little bit more. You see the piece here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I'm just going to take and wet it. You don't soak it unless you're going to form the leather, okay? Uh, like when you do a gun holster or knife sheath or something like that, you're basically forming it, you're getting it so wet that you can then mold it. Here you're just getting it wet enough so you'll be able to stamp it. Now, I wet it, I'm going to let it return a little bit closer to the original color, and then I will stamp. And I've got kind of something I did yesterday I worked on, I think I'm going to try, and it's going to be more freehand. I don't do very good freehand, so if this doesn't come out, don't, 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 <laughs> don't judge me on that, okay? Um, but I kind of had an idea using some of the stamps and the swivel knife and something. I'm going to let it come out here and uh, work with it. Swivel knife, basically, uh, and I've got a, for my wood carving, I've got these leather straps I use to keep the, the blade sharp enough. It's not real sharp, but it's sharp enough to cut, um, cut into wet leather. Okay. And all I'm going to do here, I'll see if I can do it or not. Not sure if it's going to work well or not. I basically cut in grooves. I don't know if you can see it or not. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. And that's going to be a kind of a meadow. Okay. It's, it's going to come to take together. Then I'm going to take a stamp that's a little flower. I'm going to take, and there's a couple of different things. I've got a couple of different mallets. This is a, a leather mallet. And then I've got a one that's a little bit heavier I use when I have to punch holes for sewing and things like that. I'm going to take this flower. I'm just going to put a couple places in here. I That's put a couple of flowers in here, okay? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I'm going to take my swivel right? knife and I'm put stems on it. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a couple stems down to the ground. Some of them are a little bit bigger than others. Okay. <sighs> now I've got stems going into the grass, okay? Ground. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this other one, as soon as I find it, right one, there it is. Let me put a little bit of grass in there. And some of the stamps, like when you do leather, lettering and things like that, you kind of need a little bit more harder hand onto it. But some of them just do a, a little bit, put a little bit of grass in there. Oh yeah, and I see that. Now we got the, the this is supposed to be a rock. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. But anyway, uh, um, so I've got some flowers and I've got some grass into it. Then I'm going to take and put what I always have to have on a good, nice day. I've got a sunshine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So put a sun up there. Now, this one is the hardest for me because it's the most freehand. Um, I'm going to try and do a cloud. Um, like I said, sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just going to try and do a cloud up here in the sky. I want to envision a cloud. <clears throat> you know, if I was Charlie Brown, I could probably see a lot of things. <laughs> right? The way you talk about your work sounds like Bob Ross and the happy trees that he used to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I did there is I didn't cut into the leather. I didn't stamp, but I used a little, um, <clears throat> can't remember what these are called. It's a tracing tool. Okay. Is like an awl? 
it's well it doesn't have a sharp point on to it okay it's got a little point it's like tracing um yeah. and i made it there so because if i cut into it it's cut there already with this i can always modify it if i do it this way well i've got the little cloud there let me see what i'm going to do here with it um and then I've got another tool. This is called a backgrounder, okay? And I'm going to kind of maybe feather this a little bit, add a little texture to it. Into my cloud. I can look really good like a cloud. And then I'm going to take, um, I've got another knife. It's, a little, it's not a, quite a swivel knife, but it's kind of the same thing. It's got a knife blade here oh, yeah. and there and another type on this side. But I'm not going to use the, the swivel knife. It's a little bit bigger blade, so it's a little harder to do some fine. So I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to trace around the... The cloud in itself. I'm going to cut a little bit out. Now that I've got my basics yeah, there. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. <clears throat> And I know, like I said, I'm not very good. Clouds are not one of my things. <clears throat> but then I'm also going to take um, tools here a little bit. This is called a beveler. There's kind of bevels the edges around. Okay? Oh, yeah. And so I'm going to kind of take Bevel it around a little bit. You don't need a lot of pressure. That's part of a learning is you learn to to stamp how much pressure you need for different things. Um, so basically, I kind of raise, I'm raising the cloud a little bit off the server because I'm basically okay. indenting it around the cloud. Um, and I can do the same thing with the flowers. I can do the same, probably not the grass, but I could do with the, the, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the rock type of thing, do different things in it type of thing. Um, put a little bit of design in, see if I can do a little bit there. And make a little bit of indentation there. So that kind of helps give it a 3D effect? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I kind of made a little bit of a, a piece on the rock that doesn't look, so it's just not a, it's more of a 3D type of thing. Um, if I took the beveler around, sometimes I'll use that beveler. Sometimes I'll use this tool, which is just a, a mod modeling tool. Uh, this one you can buy cheap at Hobby mm -hmm. Lobby, places like that. You buy expensive ones, but there's no use to buy expensive tools, you know. <laughs> right. And I can come in and just kind of trace it around. I'm going to come in here and make it stand out a little bit more. So now the rock stands out a little bit more from the rest of the Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So this is basically it. It's 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 just a lot of it is just playing around and figuring out. Um, I don't do a lot of the freehand stuff. This just came to me the other night. 
try something like this and I did a little sample just to kind of show you what it is. Uh, the last time I did it for a demonstration for another group, I actually did that part of that birthday card. Mm. Uh, I did that for them <coughs> to show them. So it's just kind of things like that. Um, but it's just creativity. It's, it's nothing magic about it. Uh, there are tips and tricks, you know, and you can learn most of those on YouTube. Mm. But it's just magic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Tool-wise, uh, basic tool kit costs about, oh, about $25 to $30. So that includes the mallet and stamps, basic stamps, and a swivel knife, uh, and sometimes one of these, these tracing tools um, off of Amazon, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not real expensive to start it. And uh, like I said, leather is the most expensive, but I have worked out with if any of you want to try it, now I can't give you any, I don't have the tools I can get to you, you know, type of thing. Um, but if any of you want to try it, I've worked out with frog jelly that they'll probably donate some leather. Mm. You'd at least try some of it if you want to. Okay. And that doesn't, you don't have to buy these exact tools. Um, I've got some, I've used screwdrivers. Ends of screwdrivers and different things. You just find different objects that give you a design, okay, on the, on the leather. Um, how it is, I think I put most of them back in the drawer, but you've got, I've got different things and I just try them, you know. Um, you don't have to be expensive and you basically, you just buy it piecemeal. You know, you can... You go on Amazon, there'll be kits, $500, and you got all this stuff in it. Well, you don't need all this stuff, okay? Um, well, yeah, you do. It's got 500 things in it. Yeah, you got to have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean you got the best stuff for that $500. That's, That's right. right. Now, mm -hmm. there's a level, basically, tools are like anything, you know. Uh, if you're doing it professionally, you're going to pay more for your tools. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they're actually die makers out there. They do it professionally, though. You, you'll ask them and they'll handcraft each one of these, okay? Wow. For you. Um, most of the one I've got come from Japan or China, you know, so they're not that cheap. No, not from Japan, China. Japan is getting pretty expensive too because their craft is not very good. <clears throat> and so the only other thing you need, uh, I have a mat here I bought from Hobby Lobby, this green mat. You can take yeah. Just to cut, use a cutting surface. This is a piece of granite I have. You don't need a piece of granite. What you do need something is something that's a firm surface, okay? Because the worst part is that if you tap it, it bounces up and comes down again, okay? So you need something that's a firm surface. And that's basically it. Okay. Uh, so if anybody, if you want to get into this, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do as much as I can to help you. So, so, uh, so, Steve, uh, I just general question: Do they? Uh, you have some uh, your 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 stamps, or, or you call you call them stamps? Or what do you call them? Yeah, they're just stamps. Okay. Cool stamps. Do, they, do they make do they make bigger stamps than the than the? Oh yeah, they make, okay. they make them all different sizes. Okay. They make them all different sizes. Okay. For some of them, I've got this is a handle. For one of the couple of them, I didn't bring them out. Let's see if I can find one quickly. Like I have here, here's a squirrel. Okay. Oh, okay, excellent. But so basically, you you put it on and you stamp it. It's a bigger Got stamp. It. Okay. Got it. You don't have just have the small one. You have big ones. Uh, okay. All different sizes. Um, even the ones I have have different size, uh, uh, different diameter stems on them, okay? Mm -hmm. you can, some of them are smaller than others, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. it all varies in what you're doing uh, with it. There's just a lot of different things. It's not, uh, like I said, you don't, a lot of the original tooling, they never had these stamps. They designed their own. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, the, the, the leather makers, of course, a lot of them were metal workers too, so they went out and they designed their own. 
Wow. But even now, you don't need a lot of different things. Um, like I said, I've used different objects. I just found around my shop you wow. know, to make little impressions in it. Um, so it's up to you what you want to do with it. Uh, some of them are kind of more standard. Um, I've got bigger flowers. I've got a maple leaf. Uh, I've got elephants. I've got fish. You know, um, I have a uh, what's called a mule foot. Oh. I call it mule shoe, but they call it mule foot. Um, so it kind of gives that impression. Just a lot of different things yeah. uh, to work with it. Got basket weaves. So it makes more, more like a basket weave type of impression. Um, more, more like that. Uh, it's hard to see because it's a little dark. Oh, so that's something you could just stamp and, and, yeah. and, put, and put them together. It looks like right. it's a, 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 a textured surface. Yeah. Right, yeah. And there's lots of different types of basket weaves, too. Or for what's in it, sometimes you can get like barbed wire <clears throat> fence, you can get rope, you can get whatever you want in there, you know, type of thing. Um, individually, if you go to Tandy, the, the stamps are going to be fairly expensive. Um, if you go to Frog Jelly, what they've got there, they'll sell for $250. Okay. Okay. They don't sell a lot of them, so they just have it in stock. And they don't replenish it, so whatever they've got is what they've got. They've got basic stamps, okay? And they'll sell it for $250 each. Um, uh, now, Tandy's, you can get thousands, you know, they have whole catalogs, a catalog, Tandy catalog will yeah. have every stamp in it, and you, they put out a catalog every year, and you, all you do is you go through and look at which one you want, <laughs> and they've got specialties, they've got uh, flags, they've got, uh, of course, crosses, uh, skull heads, you know, oh, yeah. um, uh, just everything, you know, yeah. motorcycles, whatever, you know, and they will have those, okay? Um, so it's just kind of, and if you ever want to, just look at some of the, you know, like, like go to a, a Tandy website and just look at some of the things they've got. They'll, they'll show you pictures of it. Uh, if Tandy has a sale, which is usually around Christmas time, okay, into the new year, you get some fairly good prices there, okay? They're a little bit more as far as the leather from frog jelly um, than frog jelly. And I buy some of my tools off of Amazon. Um, though a lot of these I bought, some of them I had from the beginning because my wife had done some in seminary and we just had them in a box. I started with those. I think I had about six. I started in a box with those and then just added a couple at a time as I went on. I think I've only purchased one or two of them from Tandy and the rest of from Frog Jelly. You know, um, so you just kind of go and you look, and you see. And uh, both places I have people to talk about. And, and like Tandy, they'll have a station set up where you can take and you can stamp and see what it looks like. You know, each one. Because they get a big wall with all of these stamps in it. And you just pull it out and a piece of leather there and you stamp it and just kind of see what it looks like. Yeah. So there's just a lot of things there. Each one, each place has a lot of good um, information. Uh, Tandy does offer classes uh, there at their site on 820. Um, so you can attend some of their classes, you know, there if you want to. Yeah. You just have to look at what they are there online on there. Okay. But I said a lot, I haven't, I did a class for a little bit at the Senior Center here in Grand Prairie. Uh, I did it for one month. I was going to do it for the second month, and the senior center kicked the guy out because he was he was a veteran who had PTSD. Oh yeah, oh, wow. PTSD. He got off. He went off his medication, and it just got too bad. Oh no! They they just said we don't want you anymore because he was yeah. he was yeah. getting really mean and affecting people. He was a good leather worker, but he he was really. I say, bothering a lot of other people. Yeah. And so he offered to do, you know, continue to do it, come to his house, but I decided I didn't do that. So I just yeah. continued on my own, pick up my yeah. own things, figure it out. Yeah. Because really I had learned, other than some, a few techniques of stamping and things like that, 
I had figured out almost everything else that he is offering, you know. And you can look at YouTube, too. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. YouTube is great. You can find about anything. You can find about sewing. You can find about stamping. You can find about anything you want to do on leather work. You're going to find it. Uh, and it's going to come from a variety of places around the world. Mm -hmm. Some of them are European. Uh, of course, you got to put up with their the European accents. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, the, and the humor, European humor sometimes. Humor, yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, they have to put up with our American humor, too. That's right. <laughs> but then you got some old guys, like there are some of the Texan guys, you know, and they're Texan, you know, so you got to put up with their Texan humor, and their accents, and things like that. But there's a very yeah. good people, and you can, so most of them have channels you can subscribe to if you'd like it. You just subscribe mm -hmm. to it, and they'll you. you, you pull down their videos, um, almost anything you want to learn about leather working learn. Okay. Uh, so if you are interested, let me know and I'll work out and get some deal for some leather for you. Even okay. if you don't have want to buy all the tools, all you need is a mallet. And the only thing I suggested is don't use a metal hammer. Okay. When you buy these, um, because it'll fire out the ends on the, on the metal base. So use a, I use this one's a leather one. It's an old one. It's a, they don't sell them quite like this, the quality like this. This is what my wife got when she was in seminary in 76, okay? Um, is that wood? Is it made out of wood? No, this is leather. You can buy oh, that's leather. Oh. This is leather. Well, it's, it's, it's a rolled leather with okay. a wood handle. Uh, and it's got a very good, it's got some give in to it. So it's not a real yeah. firm. Uh, and then I this one I got from Home Depot. <laughs> okay, and I've got the rubber end, but then I also got the the wet. And it's weighted, so it's got a little bit more oomph when I need it yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you don't it's have rubber to buy on expensive one ones. What? what was that? It's rubber on one end and what on yeah. the other? It's rubber and then plastic on the other one. Plastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either one will work because it's not metal. Okay. Um, uh -huh. That's the only thing, you know, there's other, probably many other things you can buy different tools with it. Um, uh, I've got a strap cutter to, to wraps, you know, different pieces of leather in the thinner. Uh, I got that at Frog Jelly. They're not real expensive. Um, some of my tools I use, uh, this is a one of knives, it's called a, a rotary knife. Some use it to crafts, you know, these, okay. these work great on leather. Uh, I just got a, you know, knife like this. Oh, this yeah. one I got at Lumber Liquidators when I did some flooring. This one I think I got at Michael's. And this one I bought at dollar, uh, 99 cent store for a dollar. Yeah, yeah, exacto right. knife. And you can, these, they're all replaceable blades. Um, even the rotary knife. Now leather will cut, take a little bit more uh, when you cut the leather, it's going to dull the knife a little bit faster if you cut paper and things like that. But I figured out how to sharpen these. Okay. okay. I figured out how to sharpen them. Plus, I've got a much. My wife had ordered some things from Cricket. They, they sent her some freebies, and one was a set of rotary knife blades, and she oh, didn't have nice. a rotary knife, so I got some. Wow. So, anyway, my wife does Cricket stuff. Uh, she does a lot of really good anyway that's it you know i know i kind of monopolize a lot of time there but um oh, Steve, any Rick, questions go ahead you go ahead done a great job yes presenting great your craft and sharing with us some of the techniques it's been really interesting and one of the good things is it is you know it's, it's like even with woodworking um you mess it up if it's a small piece you just don't worry about it. You know, okay, just throw it away. Don't have it there. Um, for the big things like um, my Bible cover, I make a template out of cardstock first. Because mm -hmm. okay? cardstock is a lot cheaper than leather. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I made a template, and there's videos on how to do that. It's just unbelievable how to make templates. Okay. Oh. And so it's just kind of interesting to see how it all works out. And, uh, um, you can just, like I say, you can find almost anything about it. 
in there. And some of the some of the YouTubes are from Tandy. Tandy has some really good YouTubes. There's other places. Weaver Tools out of, of uh, Pennsylvania have really good tutorials. Um, you know, they'll they'll talk about how to stamp. They'll talk about how to dye. They'll talk about how to sew. They'll talk about how to do templates. You know, so it's everything. And usually I, I mm -hmm. usually I buy, read about, look at about three or four different YouTube videos from different people before I do the project. Yeah. Because each <laughs> one gives you a little trick how to do it. I do so. that sometimes with sewing projects. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that, that's it. That's it. You know. Steve, um, thank you. Like thank I said, you, if Steve. you want to try it, I, I can... Uh, I talked to um, 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 Frog Jelly, and they're willing to try and work out and getting some some donation of leather, you know, smaller pieces. Yeah. Place to learn how to do it if you if you're interested. Just let me know. Right. I'm willing to work with them. I'm let's, usually there probably at least once a month with them. Let's give Steve a round of applause for such a great presentation. Thank you, Steve. Very informative. Very good, Steve. You've done a fabulous job. I heard somebody say during the middle of the session, you should be on YouTube. That's true. Well, okay, so did you record this one, Gail? Yes. Okay. So you will be on so YouTube. So he is on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, make your debut on YouTube soon. You know, some, some of my wood turning folks actually have sets of cameras set up at different angles to do their oh. demonstrations. And I don't have that. All I've got is my computer, you know, which I, if I had different cameras, I could have showed things at different angles and things like that. But, um, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how they do that. I guess they use USB there's a little, cameras. There's little, there's little mixer software they can buy. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, actually it's free. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a free, it's open source that basically allows them to plug in because you got, they're all USB cameras. Uh -huh. All you need is a USB hub. Yeah. You see, you got multiple cameras at the same time, and you just switch from camera to camera. Well, the camera I use is a USB camera. Yeah. But I haven't well, tried and, hooking up and, to it. And Sue has one, but she uses it for her work, so I couldn't get it for her. <laughs> uh, in the past, I've had several USB cameras, but uh, I don't have them anymore. You know. Uh, somewhere along the way. They're not terribly expensive. No, but there's been a run on them. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Because of COVID. Yeah. In fact, for a while there it was hard pressed to even find any. Yeah. For a while, uh, beginning of COVID particularly. Um, I think some of them have come back in again. But there's also, of course, you have to read the reviews. Anything we buy, I'm just going to throw this out. Okay. Uh, we buy a lot of us from Best Buy, Best Buy because our daughter works there. But usually what we'll do is we'll find the product we want and then we'll go out to Amazon and read all the reviews. Sure. On the same product, okay? Yeah. Or any other reviews we find. Uh, and then we'll probably buy it from Best Buy. <laughs> you know, just, just because, you know, it's, it's, uh, she has a great discount being an employee there. And her, her, her biggest discount is the uh, service plan, warranty service plan. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just, I know I'm chasing a rabbit there. That's all right. Well, let's, okay. let's see what's up for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Museum Day with Peggy Spear, and our topic is politics. So mm. she's going to share with us some artwork around the theme of politics. So we won't get into the, um, the negative parts of politics, but we'll be looking at art on that subject. Art, yep. And we also want to take a few minutes to talk about Thursday because we had a gap in our sessions with 
uh, mind fit and educate. So we actually have an opportunity to bake on Thursday. Hmm. And so I wanted to see if anyone has any suggestions. And then I do have um, another, I have an idea, but I wanted to see what you all want to suggest first. Um, suggestions? Chocolate? Chocolate? Well, what I, what I have is something chocolate. Okay. Does anybody have any suggestions on a cookie that you're really hungry for? It, th there's one I'm going to be hungry for, but you don't have to do it anytime soon. What's that? It's, uh, ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. You weren't here when we did ginger snaps, but we might do it again. Okay. We did that one back at the very beginning, and that is actually one of my favorite cookies. Yeah. Yep. So do you like your ginger snaps snappy or chewy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you like me, Don, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. However they come out of the oven. Yep. yep. I, I think what I like most about them is they almost always come out perfectly shaped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're using <clears throat> the same scoop. So they look uniform and they look like they mm -hmm. just look perfect. So we could do ginger snaps again. Yeah. Um, if everybody would like. And then let me go ahead and show you this other option. So, because we might do it in the future. Oh. Can you all see that? Wow. Ooh, yum. Oh, yeah. oh, toffee. I absolutely toffee love cookies. it. Toffee wow. cookies. Yeah. This is that a looks chocolate good. toffee cookie, and it looks like it has um, toffee chips and almonds and chocolate drizzle. Okay. Mm. On the top. Is that coconut? I haven't read the recipe yet. But okay. Let's look real quick and see if I can. This is actually a video. I saw this on my Facebook page last week and I uh, tagged it so that I could find it again. I'm not sure what the ingredients for this recipe are, but it does look a little bit like coconut, but I think that might be the um, the crushed almond. Okay, okay, that's so, fine. So we'll put that on the list, but we'll do ginger snaps. Thank you. Mm. Sounds good. Love ginger snaps. You, you, better, you better be careful about asking me what kind of cookies I like, because I like a lot of different cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have expanded my repertoire of cookies through this program. <laughs> Because we have tried some new recipes that I had never used before. Okay. So, uh, but tomorrow is museum day. So I will see mm. you all tomorrow at 1030. Have a yes, wonderful ma rest of the day. And again, Steve, thank you for all the hard work you put in. Yes, thank you, Steve. No problem. I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. You, you make me want to. You make me want to drive over there and learn from the master. Well, you That's can right. come anytime, anytime you want. <laughs> Gail knows the way she's been here yeah. uh, to my I house one time. And so anytime. I have a very nice shop. Yeah. So I saw that mm -hmm. it was cool enough today. You had to have the door closed. Well, otherwise the sunshine made yeah. it too bad. Yeah. Wouldn't, you wouldn't able to see anything. Yeah. It's bad enough with the lights on in the shop, but if it, if uh, I had opened the door open, you wouldn't see anything. Well, yeah. it's probably cool enough today. You wouldn't have wanted the door open. Oh no, today. no, you don't need you don't need to don't need anything. Uh, I do have a little air conditioner for the summertime, and so that helps when it's really hot out. Awesome. All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you Good very to much. See you. Right. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>